Hello, Facebook family, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Nash at Noon. Before we go any further, I just want to thank everyone for your concern, for the prayers, for all those who've reached out to me. I posted on Tuesday that I was a little under the weather, and what really happened is Monday I hurt my back. I hurt my back badly, and, and I spent pretty much ever since Monday afternoon until this morning laying on a heating pad. And, you know, this is really my first venture out and about as I'm here at my office today. So thank you for your prayers and thank you for your understanding uh, of us not having our devotional time Tuesday. I don't know about you, but I really missed it. I hope you did too. You know, our Thursday edition of Nash at Noon is, is one of those times that we have set aside to do a lyric study. Right, we're going to do a lyric study today on one of the songs that we're going to be using Sunday morning in our worship service. You know one of the hardest things about this pandemic has been, at least for me and, and for a lot of other people that I've talked to, we're designed by God as social creatures. We're not designed to be on our own. We're not designed to be quarantined, to be honest with you. I mean, our relationships are very important to us. It's how we're wired. It's just, it's who we are, right? Now, we all still have access to the most important relationship we have, and that's our, our relationship with Jesus Christ. Nothing about this pandemic has changed that. Nothing about this has altered any, in any way, shape, form, or fashion the blessing that we have to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. But we're still social creatures, okay? Even if we're in a pandemic, even when it's safer at home, even when it's stay at home, we're still designed as social creatures, and we really need more. Now, most of us also have access to our second most important set of relationships, and that's with our family. And again, that's wonderful. The, the, the amount of family time that we've been able to spend together during this pandemic, I think, has been fantastic. You know, and hopefully it's God has shown us through this that we need to slow down. We need to make family and time with family a higher priority. But still, there are relationships that we are missing. We, we need all kinds of folks. I mean, we need all kinds of different types of people in our lives, right? We all need someone who's an expert in our field or an expert in something that we're passionate about to pour their knowledge and their experience into us. And on the other side of the coin, we also all need someone who's an amateur, who is learning about something we're passionate about or our field that we can be pouring into. We all need someone that's our cheerleader, that's our encourager, that's there on the sidelines helping us because the reality is life gets tough. And when it gets tough, we are blessed if we have a friend there to encourage us. Okay, we also need those friends that we can just goof off with, right? We can just be ourselves, someone to enjoy each other's company, someone to laugh with, and, and just someone to really celebrate life with. But we also need that, that serious person, you know, that person that we go to for advice, that, that person that we can talk about important, deep things with, right? And there are many, many, many more. And depending on your personality and your stage in life and all kinds of other factors, there are all kinds of other people that we need in our lives. But we're also blessed that sometimes multiple roles get to be filled by one person, right? And that's a wonderful thing. Many of our relationships have many different facets. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, a facet, you know, is it can be talking about the little polished plain surfaces on a cut gem, which gives gems their sparkle, but that's not the facet I'm talking about. The facets I'm talking about today are, are those different uh, multifaceted areas, those different areas of friendship. When you have more than one person filling more than one role, I'm sorry, one person filling more than one role in your life, that's a multifaceted relationship. And that's a wonderful thing. You know, sometimes that person you goof off with is also that person that you share deep, intimate times with. And maybe they're your encourager as well. And it's a wonderful thing for one person to fill multiple roles. Because the reality is one of the most multifaceted relationships we have is our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I mean, in the Bible, there are all kinds of different names for God, right? There's Yahweh, our Lord, Jehovah, Elohim, God, El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty, El Elyon, the Lord Most High, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord My Banner, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord That Heals, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord Will Provide, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of Hosts, and Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of Peace. And that's just a few of them. There are lots and lots and lots more. 
And there are also many facets to our relationship with Jesus. He goes by many names in the New Testament. The Almighty One, the Alpha and Omega, the, our Advocate, the Author and Perfecter of our faith, the Bread of Life, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Bridegroom, our Cornerstone. And again, there are many, many, many more. Today we're going to talk about what I feel is one of the most precious names, one of the most precious facets of my relationship with Jesus Christ. All right. And that's that I get to call him friend. So today we're going to talk about the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord, and we again just thank you so much for the many gifts and blessings you give us today and every day, Father. Lord God, I just pray that you will be with our time together. Help us, Lord, as we seek to understand you more. Help us as we seek to get to know you better. Help us, Lord, as we seek just to deepen our relationship, our friendship with you. And Father, I just pray that you will hide, you know, speak through these lips of clay, Lord. Not my words, but yours. And hide this man behind your cross. We love you and we thank you, Father. It's in your holy, wonderful, and amazing name we pray. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Again, it's just one of those wonderful, wonderful songs, you know. And I don't know about you, but for me, knowing the story behind a song many times makes it even more precious and the meaning even deeper. Well, you know, this song has one of those wonderful, wonderful stories. In 1819, there was a man by the name of Joseph Scriven who was born in Ireland. And as a young man, he fell in love. And on the night before he was to be married to the love of his life, she drowned. And so they weren't, they weren't able to get married. Well, through the grief and in the morning after that, and he decided he wanted to move and get a fresh start. So he moved to Canada. Joseph moved to Canada, started over, settled in, worked hard and met and fell in love with another woman. And you know what? That fiance died before they were able to get married as well. Can you imagine? How easy would it have been for Joseph to go from grief to bitterness or even anger with God? You know, but he didn't. He was well known all of his life for being devoted to serving others. He was well known for sharing the love of Christ everywhere he went. He gave freely of his possessions and he was always ready to help those in need. And he got word over in Canada that his mother in Ireland was ill. And so he wrote her a poem. And this poem was called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. You see, this, this poem wasn't just some arbitrary expression about an arbitrary God. No, this was a very personal poem that described what Jesus meant to him. The first verse of this poem turned into our wonderful hymn that we get to celebrate and enjoy today. It's, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. What powerful words, you know. What a friend we have in Jesus. I mean, again, like we talked about before, Jesus, Jesus is many things to all of us. It's this multifaceted relationship. But again, friend is precious. Jesus calls himself our friend in John 15, 14. You are my friend's if you do what I command you. So when we live a life that's obedient to God, we get to call ourselves friend of Jesus. Now the Pharisees called Jesus a friend of sinners in Matthew 9, 11, and again in Matthew eleven sixteen 16 through 19. You know, they really meant it as, a, as an assault on his character, his reputation. But I think he took it as a badge of honor, a badge of his purpose. I mean, why did Jesus come to earth anyway? According to Luke 5, 32, he says, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In other gospels, it says he came to seek and to save the lost. The reality is Jesus wants to be your friend. He wants to be my friend. And we are so blessed by that friendship and that relationship. As the song continues, this is all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Wait, privilege? Really? Yes, it is a privilege for us. It's a privilege afforded to us because of our relationship with him. 
Psalm 55, 22 instructs us to cast your burden on the Lord and He will sustain you. Jesus wants us to cast our burdens upon Him. He wants to be our Savior. He wants to be our sustainer. I mean, I don't know about you, but I have been many times in my life when I could use some of that sustaining, right? And honestly, I'll be honest, I've lived a fairly easy life. I mean, of course, we've had our bumps in the road, but I know a lot of people who have suffered a lot worse than I. But I can't understand how anybody gets through this thing called life on their own. I don't understand how anyone could possibly go without being a friend of Jesus. You know, but the author of these words, Joseph, you know, he knew about difficult circumstances. He knew about personal tragedy. He knew firsthand that God can and does bring peace to troubled hearts of those who seek him. He knows personally what it is to cast his cares upon the Lord. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. I mean, you know, we've talked about this before. Peace is such a wonderful commodity and so difficult to find in the world that we live in today. I say it's difficult to find not because we don't know where it is. I know exactly where it is, but it can only be found in one place, and that's in Jesus Christ. Why would we forfeit peace? We shouldn't. Peace isn't found in our circumstances, right? Peace is, isn't found in the absence of conflict like the world might lead you to believe. No, peace is found where? In the presence of God. And the only way we can be in the presence of God is through our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And when we forfeit that peace of God, when, when we invite pain, needless pain, into our lives. I mean, life has enough pain. No one knew this better than, again, the author of these words, Joseph. He knew this. He knew what pain felt like. He knew what grief was really like. He's not looking for more pain. So how do we avoid this need, needless pain? All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. He can handle our trials. He can handle our difficulties. He wants to take them from us. Okay? How much of them? Everything. Everything to God in prayer. Not part. All. Why not give them to Him? I mean, honestly, it's too large of a burden for us to bear on our own anyway. Remember Matthew 11 that we talked about recently. Jesus is inviting us into His yoke so that we can have rest. And so we can bring the strength of the trained member of the group to bear our burdens, to bear things that we cannot bear on our own. And again, the only way this is possible, the only way that we can get in the yoke with Jesus, the only way that we can have the peace that passes all understanding, that makes no earthly sense, the only way that we can call Jesus our friend is to accept his gift of the cross. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not complicated. It is so super simple. It's not based upon what you do or what you don't do. It's based upon what was done for you on the cross at Calvary. All we need to do is admit that we're a sinner. Do you know you're a sinner? I am too. I'm not calling you anything. I'm not calling myself as well. But the reality is I don't think we can fully comprehend the depth of of our sinfulness, the depth of our need for Jesus Christ until we wrestle with the depth of our sinfulness. Because we are nothing more than lost as lost can be unless we have Jesus Christ. Admit that we're a sinner. Jesus came. Admit that He came. He is the Son of God. He lived a perfect life. He lived that perfect life so He could be the perfect sacrifice on the cross on Calvary for me and for you for all of us. We need to believe that's who he is. And then we need to confess with our mouth and confess with our actions the simple fact that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's it. It's that simple. And you invite him into your heart. I mean, it's, you, you say a prayer because that's how we talk to God, but it's not some kind of a magic prayer like saying, a, a, you know, mixing some potion or something. It's not some magical thing that happens. The prayer is simply an invitation for Christ to come in 
because he's standing at the door and knocking. And only we can let him in. Could he force his way in? Yes, he could. But he loves us too much. He wants that relationship to be personal and to be voluntary. What a friend we have in Jesus. Such a wonderful song. Will you sing it with me as we're dismissed today? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord, and we just thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for taking our sins upon yourself. Thank you, Lord, for clearing the way for us to be in right relationship with God. Thank you for the sacrifice you made for us on the cross. And thank you, Jesus, for wanting to be our friend, for wanting to be an active participant in our lives. Help us, Lord. Help us to live lives that glorify you. Help us, Lord, to allow you into our lives in every way possible. Help us, Lord, to invest in our friendship with you and to share that friendship with everyone that we encounter. Thank you, Jesus. We ask all this in your holy, wonderful, and amazing name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, it's been a privilege and an honor to speak to you. And we look forward to seeing you this Sunday as we gather together in worship in our sanctuary. Or you can join us here on our Facebook page. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day.